Ready? All right, Uncivilized Vitality, new survival pack, uh, automatic. If you're thirsty, water. <laughs> See, you get a drink from your survival pack. <laughs> mm. Maybe the sun comes out and it's too hot. I need a hat. Survival hat, there we go. Maybe I need to tie and lash something up. Rope, survival pack. There we go. In an emergency, we can signal the whistle. Don't blow it, blow the whistle. <laughs> Lock. So, uh, uh, what are we going to do? 39, 39.95. Little girl not included. <laughs> Okay, um, all kidding aside, or all fun aside, um, for the earlier half of the video, let's talk about this actual piece of kit we recommend. <clears throat> Call it a uh, Morigami, uh, which is kind of a play on my last name, because uh, I'm obsessed with uh, bandanas and cloth and such. Um, and uh, origami, the Japanese art of folding paper to make a bunch of different shapes. So this is a um, Morigami. So we have a pocket size, the standard size, which is... Uh, our neckerchief that we wear, or like this black silk one I carry uh, everywhere with me. I always have one. Um, cowboys use them as wild rags, you know, like around their, around their neck tied up. There's lots of different uses for the standard size or even the small handkerchief pocket size. The uh, jumbo would be like a tarp uh, or a tent or um, something you use for a shelter. Um, <clears throat> then the fourth size is the large. And we give these in three different shapes. We talk about the square, the rectangle, and now uh, the hoop. So you just saw me wearing in the earlier part of this video um, my Morigami uh, hoop um, as like a satchel. And I had, uh, I had a little kid in there pretending to be the emergency shelter. That was fun. But let's talk about this kit and some things you can do with it. A bit of kit. So this is a, a large square. This one is made of uh, scrap from one of my old uh, great kilts or great plaids, uh, kind of a lightweight wool, but they, um, I think this was not the clergy tartan, but something called the, the Jolly Roger, something, it's not an official clan tartan, it was just sort of a made up pattern. But this is the scrap from one of my old kilts. So it's usually five or six feet by 15 feet, real big. I had one wear out and I made this little hoop out of it. It's square, which is important to have this shape and it's sewn into a circle all the way around, reinforced and stitched. I take this with me uh, every time I go camping or one like it. I have some other ones I'll show you in a second and I'll show you why. Um, first, I keep the uh, square shape so that I can fold it into a rectangle. And one of the things I do with this rectangle, especially in the cooler months, is I just drape it over my shoulder at night. Now I've got four layers of wool across my upper shoulders and back and uh, double layers in the front and then I just sort of tuck that down in my shirt and covers my shoulders this little shawl configuration around camp when the mornings are real chilly six or seven in the morning uh, or maybe an extra layer at night I can flip this up use it as a hood to keep the uh, insects off me uh, keep the rain off me uh, maybe keep the, the sun beating down off of your top of your head um, my cotton ones I take sometimes I take the cotton ones they, they make a great towel um, you can fold this up at night if you need a little bit of extra uh, cushion on the ground for your head. You can make a quick pillow out of these. Uh, and then like we showed earlier in the video, they make a great field expedient day bag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drape that square over my arm and then I'll take some items like um, my water bottle and a nesting cup. Right? And I'll set those down in there. I'll take my uh, toiletry kit. So I got some some paper and some hand sanitizer in there. Maybe a folding saw and a roll of extra bank line. I'll throw my poncho in there. So now I've got a field expedient uh, shelter, and then maybe just a dry bag in case it really comes down. I can protect my phone or maybe gather up some of my other stuff. Okay. All that stuff's balanced in there. Then what I'm going to do is gather up the top, and I just start twisting it in a circle like this and you can see as it tightens down 
as it rolls up. I've made a nice little haversack or a shoulder bag. Let me move my glasses out of the way here. Right. Nice little haversack or a bag. I don't have to carry an extra day pack. And I've got all the things I need to be out away from the main camp for the day. Sling that behind. As you saw in the earlier part of the video, you got a child, a recalcitrant child that won't walk the hiking path or gets tired. Spread that out a little bit. Have her sit right down in there so her legs are out. She can lean all the way back and take a nap while I get to continue to walk the trail and enjoy nature while she takes a little break. Uh, that was just kind of a goof. Uh, or maybe she broke, uh, sprained her ankle or twisted her knee. You slap her in here and carry her. At one point, I carried her on my back a little lower by taking the straps up and behind each arm and across the base of my neck. And she just rested in there. Or you can just carry your stuff back here if you don't like that bouncing around on the side. You get where you're going, you can just empty all the contents out. When you get back to camp, shake that out. You're right back to that square cloth that you can use, again, as a shawl, a hood. A lot of times in the morning, if I don't need all those extra layers, I'll just flip it up and over like this while we're sitting around at the, the campfire. I'm just inside there. You just sort of tuck that down. It gives you a nice, lightweight way to keep warm without breaking out your coat. You can throw the hood up. Right. You can reach out from underneath, drop that down off your shoulder, bring the other arm out to get some work done. It's just an extra layer of clothing. One of the other things I use this for besides um, <clears throat> uh, as a towel is when we get out of the, the river, we're all out camping, maybe it's a mixed, uh, mixed company, and you don't want to change in front of each other or uh, go behind a tree, you just fold this up, wrap this down a little bit. And now you can just change, uh, you know, right there while you're talking. Get your wet suit off, put your dry clothes on, dry shorts on. Let's say you've had an encounter with a bear and you've soiled your pants. Maybe you have to make a field expedient uh, walking kilt. So you can walk around with it like this. You can use that as an extra layer. You could run that. I usually measure them out so that at the top for me they would reach all the way down to my ankles so I'm gonna pull that out to the side tuck one the front end edge into my hip fold that over fold it again and then roll it down so that it holds over itself just like you do with a bath towel now maybe I've got that down to my ankles to prevent uh, the insects from bothering me while I squat down or something or maybe I just fancy wearing a long kilt so this is Referred to in other cultures as a, a sarong, a lava lava, um, mm, what's the other word? Not the poly. Anyway, as a, a traditional standard everyday dress garment uh, for males and females alike. Females would just start up a little higher. I have this old scrap one I made, or had made actually, sewn, so that I carry this one on almost all my adventures so I can do lots of things with it. You can get them, here's a heavy duty cotton one from Japan with kind of a neat, a neat pattern on it. And kind of reversible, it's got these two patterns on the side. Uh, truthfully, this one stays in my, this is in my home, this is kind of my nighttime uh, pillow. I use this all the time. Or in the summer around the house after I get out of the shower and it's really warm out, I might just roll this down and put on a, I guess you'd say a Polynesian or Pacific Islander sort of garb to wear around because it's nice and cool in the summer. Um, there's other sorts of types of clothing you can wear with that. You can just drape it over your shoulder. Like I said earlier, you can drop that down. Cross the shoulders, pull it up, kind of cocoon yourself in there. I found that this lightweight cotton one is a good traveling origami for me, so I wear this on the airplanes. They usually have the air up, sometimes it gets kind of chill, not for me a lot, my wife gets cold. Just get inside this tube, you know, and now I've got a blanket I'm not fighting with the ends being tucked in or uh, draping over, I've just got my own little blanket. When it's time to get up and gather, I just kind of tuck that up on my shoulder and I got that uh, carried right there. Um, yet another one. Here's another version. Right. Here's a large. Uh, this one also has. A little design. 
to cover the seam. Gives it a little bit of a um, decorative highlights or accents. So this one, again, I would take this out all the way out to the side, a little above my waist, tight to the hip, fold it across, refold so that stripe is there, tuck that down, and just start folding the top edge down. And then I've got a makeshift kilt or a, a lava lava or a sarong, usually in uh, more tropical climates, but I wear this sometimes over my um, pants. If I'm wearing lightweight cotton pants from out in the woods, it gets a little chill at night. I'll throw this on like a Native American breech cloth almost, just to keep a little extra warmth. You get out quickly, I'm just gonna grab the front seam of where I folded it, just give it a yank, and then you're right out. So, having one of these hoop structures is great, just even as a towel. If you're gonna take a towel, may as well swap it out for a multifunctional piece of cotton. Now, I've got a few more examples. You can get a large morigami. So here's a large triangle. This sarong has not been joined in a hoop, all right? So it's free on the edge. You can make the, you can do the same uh, sort of things as far as garments go with this, where this time instead of folding uh, the front edge, I would just tuck this edge, bring this across, fold it down, roll it down. I've got the same structure. I can drape this up in a traditional sort of blanket style. It's a little, uh, not as convenient I think, because I've got a kind of you know, keep track of these trailing edges and hold on to it. But if you're going to take a, a large cloth for a towel and I needed to refashion uh, maybe that ex field expedient day bag, I can grab two corners and tie a simple knot, square knot in the corner. Right. Find the other long edge. Join the two corners on the other long edge the same way. With a simple square knot. And then I find the two knots. And I've made a hoop, but it's not joined completely. And into this mess, I could put uh, my items again. And then just sort of start twisting, twisting, twisting. And I've made the same kind of shoulder bag, although depending on the dimensions of your cloth, it's not quite the same. But I could still make that day bag out of the, the long rectangular open uh, large origami. I find that the hoop ones work a little better. Now a couple of specialized versions are this. I think we've talked about this before. This is my um, the Norse sari, uh, the original Nordic sari. This one has little pockets made of a waterproof material on the outside and a light wool covering on the inside and in case you're not an expert with uh, all the tucks and wraps this one just comes with a little velcro liner now I've got a, an outer covering you can fold it down for a little more security I got one of these for carry in uh, my wife for a little extra windbreak when she's out doing her morning walks in the winter or for at camp so she can sit down and stay warm and then it was so cool got myself one it's got a little pocket on the outside for maybe a fire kit or your cell phone uh, you can take the north sari off with the wool side in I've used this as a, a field expedient rain jacket just to keep some of it off me because it's waterproof I can fold this out on the ground and then boom the wife and I have a little picnic blanket or a dry spot to park my butt or even to lay down uh, and sleep on if this was my ground cloth. That's all I had. That one's a little specialized as far as morigami. It's a little less useful because of the, the waterproofing and you can't, it's a little thick and heavy. But not a bad piece of kit. And then the other thing I take with me is my blanket. Now this is uh, an Afghan, uh, Afghani Patu. Uh, it's 100% wool, it's yak wool. It's, it's not as soft as merino wool, but it's very, very warm. Doesn't matter if it gets wet, uh, it stays warm. I can tie the hoop, or I usually just use this, uh, keep it open edged around the camp at night. I use this for my sleeping blanket in my hammock. 
uh, I use it as an extra um, base layer. It's set up as a, a rectangle, so if I fold it half, then I get a square. If I were to then fold that into a triangle, once again, once again got that shawl configuration. So I've made a, a warm top, and maybe I've got the other one around as a skirt, as an extra uh, kilt, maybe, or, or um, warmth layer. If the clothing I brought either got wet or destroyed, or it's just not enough, I can form extra layers out of my blanket and my multi-purpose morigami, and these things are super handy. If you also carry your uncivilized um, buddy line uh, 2.0, the fast rope, and your patu or any wool blanket, you can come up with dozens of configurations for match coats and cloaks and sleeping bags and tarps and lots of things. But I'll do that in another video because my camera woman is slapping mosquitoes and getting pretty uh, impatient. So uh, that's it. Like the channel, make any comments below if you have any ideas for other uses for the uncivilized large morigami in the hoop shape. Sometimes we refer to this um, shorthand as our hood because this is a good way most of us wear it around camp, kind of around our neck. And then it gets a little chilly, we just throw it up as a makeshift hood. Not quite a, a Skjolden Harman, that uh, Nordic one that they make out of the triangles that um, we might have some videos somewhere. Logan Holmes sewed one himself last year and looked pretty cool. So. Anyway, come up with some ideas that you would use this for. Put it in the comments, like and subscribe to the channel, and uh, look back for that fast rope video coming soon.